Welcome again to a lecture uh, of the course on Array Signal Processing for Music Applications. Until now, we have been analyzing sounds using uh, sinusoidal representations. They work, but there are many types of sounds that are best described by what we call stochastic models. Signals like the sound of the ocean or the boat noise of a violin fit into this category of stochastic signals. We will talk about this uh, today. We will first introduce uh, the concept of stochastic signals, then uh, how to model them, what is a model of an stochastic signal, and then more specifically on how to deal with sounds using these models, so how to approximate uh, with, from an stochastic perspective uh, a particular sound. And finally, we will describe the concept of a, a system that can perform analysis and synthesis of sounds using these models. The stochastic model is complementary to the models uh, that we have covered until now. In fact, in the following lecture, we will combine the stochastic model with the sinusoidal-based models and we'll be able to take advantage of the best of both uh, types of models. What is an stochastic signal? Well, an stochastic signal cannot be described in a deterministic way. It can only be described probabilistically and the field of statistical signal processing deals with this type of signals and is a quite advanced topic. Here we'll give a very broad approach which is sufficient for our needs. So in a statistical signal processing uh, we talk about uh, the loss of probability as a way to describe uh, these uh, stochastic signals and uh, we talk about the mean, the variance and the probability distribution of uh, particular signals. And there are some uh, mathematical functions that are used uh, to analyze uh, these type of signals and, and capture some of its characteristics. For example, uh, one is the autocorrelation function. We have already seen uh, this function before. The autocorrelation function uh, allows us to, to measure the, the periodicity of a signal or the degree of uh, of uh, repeating uh, patterns in, uh, in, a, in a particular signal. We use it for detecting the fundamental frequency. So this is a function that can be used to measure how stochastic is a signal. If uh, there are no repetitions, that means that it's going to be close to a stochastic signal. So the lower uh, the autocorrelation uh, function value is, the closer is going to be the signal to a stochastic signal. Okay. And another uh, mathematical function uh, that uh, we can use is what is called the power spectral density. And also we have uh, seen uh, a similar version of that. Uh, it's basically the DFT, but with uh, a major difference. is basically the DFT to the limit. We take um, the, the, ab the square value of the absolute value of the, the DFT, and we take n, the size of the DFT, to infinity and if it converges, if it converges to a function, that's our power spectral density um, and that happens in quite a few signals. Um, and there are many models that have been proposed uh, to deal with this type of uh, stochastic signals. We'll use a very general model. Uh, expressed by this equation, which is in fact the convolution of two signals. So we will uh, consider as, as an stochastic model the idea that uh, a signal can be expressed as the convolution of white noise with the filter approximation of our signal. So by uh, taking uh, this convolution we are uh, assuming that the, the signal that we are dealing with is, uh, is well expressed or well represented by its impulse response. If we look at the same equation from a spectral point of view, we can understand a few more things. So a convolution in the frequency domain is the product of the two spectra, so the product of the white noise, uh, the spectral of the white noise with the spectrum of uh, the impulse response of the, the filter. And if we express it in, uh, in polar coordinates, 
then we can express it as the product of the two magnitude uh, spectra and uh, multiply by the exponential uh, e to the j and the sum of the two uh, phase spectra. Okay, so that's the product of these two uh, spectra. And if we uh, consider that this uh, is a stochastic signal, we basically can say that the magnitude spectrum of white noise is a, a flat line, and we will see that uh, maybe later. So it's a constant, so therefore we can, uh, we, we can take it out of the equation, so we can reduce the concept of the impulse response of the, of the filter of the input signal by the magnitude spectrum of the input signal, an approximated version of that which could be the, the frequency response of a filter, or it could be some other uh, type of function, but a function that approximates the magnitude spectrum of the input signal. And as the phase of the model, we use the phase of white noise, because the phase of a stochastic signal is uh, not so relevant. Therefore, we just can reduce the, the, the phase representation of our signal with random uh, numbers, with the uh, random numbers of the white noise. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the, the good, a good way to express this uh, stochastic model. So we take an approximation of the magnitude spectrum of our signal and we take random phases uh, for the modeling uh, the phase uh, spectrum. So this is a, a, an example. Uh, so if we start uh, from a fragment uh, of the sound, for example, of uh, an ocean sound, and let's listen to that. Okay, so we just take uh, just one frame of, of that, and then we compute the magnitude and phase spectrum of this uh, ocean sound, so the red uh, uh, plot is the, the magnitude spectrum of our input signal and the phases, the cyan uh, uh, function is the, the phases of the input signal. And then the, the black uh, line, the black line on top of the, of the magnitude spectrum is the approximation of uh, this, uh, uh, this spectrum. And we'll talk about uh, different ways to approximate that. So it's a basically a smooth approximation to the magnitude spectrum. And the, the black uh, lines in the phase spectrum are basically random numbers. Okay? And we claim that these random numbers are an approximation or a model of the random numbers that in fact are in the, in the ocean uh, phases. So we are basically saying that the phase spectrum of uh, the ocean sound uh, are just random numbers and can be approximated with any random number sequence. Okay, and then if we take the inverse uh, Fourier transform of these two black lines of the approximation of the magnitude and the random uh, phases, we get this output signal and uh, we are uh, claiming that uh, perceptually this signal is going to be similar to the first one. Of course, by looking at it, uh, that might not uh, seem to be the case, uh, because it's clearly a different shape, but given that we're talking about stochastic signals, the details of the shape are not relevant. What is important is the, the statistical properties, and so we will be able to, to try to prove uh, if uh, this uh, type of approximation works. So the main analysis issue for this stochastic model is the approximation of the time-varying magnitude spectrum of the input signal. So we'll have to compute this uh, approximation at every frame. A common approach for obtaining a filter that approximates the spectral characteristics of a sound is uh, to use a linear predictive uh, coding. With LPC, with linear predictive coding, we can obtain a set of filter coefficients, a sub k, and the frequency response of the resulting filter approximates the spectrum of the input sound. So here we see uh, the, the, a signal, x, and the idea is that uh, the approximation of this signal is defined, according to this LPC model, as 
the linear combination of past samples. Okay, so it's as defined as the sum from k equal one to uh, capital K of a sub k multiplied by x of n minus k, which are the previous samples. This is basically the expression of uh, IR filter, an infinite uh, impulse response filter that is a linear combination of previous samples. And then the, the goal of uh, LPC is to find these coefficients, to find a sub k that best uh, approximates uh, x and generates a similar signal x, uh, x uh, hat. So we define an error function that is uh, the, the sum of the, the square root of uh, this, uh, the original signal with this approximated signal and uh, we sum uh, originally from minus infinity to infinity of course then we will we will narrow down to uh, to finite length uh, uh, signals but uh, with this error measure basically we can uh, try to identify the a signal the a coefficients that uh, minimizes this error signal okay we will not talk about uh, how to actually implement that but uh, this is a very common uh, uh, common approach uh, for uh, obtaining uh, these uh, coefficients and therefore for doing uh, what we call the LPC approximation. So if we start from a, from a sound, for example, of a voice sound like this uh, soprano sound that we can listen to. Um, in fact, this is a type of sound that is commonly uh, approximated with uh, an LPC uh, model and uh, what it does is uh, obtains this uh, black line that we see in the bottom uh, plot. So in the bottom plot we see the magnitude spectrum of this fragment of uh, this uh, voice and the black line is the, the magnitude spectrum uh, of the approximation of this uh, LPC filter that approximates the, the signal. And as we can see, it, it kind of approximates what is a very uh, common characteristic of the voice, which is this formants, so these uh, resonances. Uh, so an IR filter uh, uh, is, a, is a way to, to approximate the resonances of uh, a signal quite, uh, quite uh, uh, well. And so uh, the LPC uh, works quite well for these type of signals. But the LPC does not work uh, so well for uh, many other types of signals. Uh, in here we present a more simple, uh, a simpler approximation that is just based on low pass filtering. And uh, we, we show it uh, by implementing uh, a low pass filtering using the DFT. So we start uh, from a signal uh, A of K and then we take the DFT of that and we low pass filter. Low pass filter means basically we cut uh, the, the spectrum and we only accept uh, a f uh, the, the lower part of that spectrum. And then we can take the inverse uh, DFT of, of that and we get another signal which uh, this uh, A uh, uh, tilde is uh, an approximation, a smooth approximation of uh, the original uh, A sub K signal. Then we might need to um, extend the signal in order to uh, generate the same number of samples or the same, uh, so at the same sampling rate that the signal that we started with. So in order to do that, uh, we might have to take the DFT of that zero path to extend it to uh, a longer FFT size and think and then take the inverse uh, DFT of that. So then B of K is of the same length than A of K because the A uh, tilde is just an approximation, has less samples, which is good because that means that we have uh, an approximation uh, with a uh, few number of samples. These coefficients, basically, this A tilde is uh, just the coefficients of the approximation. And this is uh, going to be the approach uh, that we will use in our implementations. Um, so now let's talk about the synthesis part of the stochastic model. If we approximate a sound uh, using LPC or with any other type of filter design approach, we can synthesize a signal from the obtained filter coefficients by filtering white noise. 
So this equation that we already have seen before is the uh, implementation of an IR filter in which uh, we are uh, filtering uh, white noise. We are filtering uh, the signal U with a series of coefficients A sub K uh, that are the coefficients of the filters. And uh, the implementation of this equation uh, can be done uh, in different ways. Uh, for example, these two block diagrams are two uh, different structures that are used uh, to implement uh, this uh, type of filtering. Uh, one, the top is called the direct form structure, and uh, the bottom one is the lattice uh, structure. Um, but if we obtain an approximation using the low pass filtering approach uh, that we mentioned, we can synthesize the sound directly by computing the inverse uh, DFT. So in here, uh, we start from our approximation of the spectrum, of the spectrum of the original signal, which is basically this uh, smooth version of the signal. It's, it's kind of like what we said, the low pass uh, filter approximation of uh, the signal and then we can just take a random faces the faces of the white noise and we take the inverse DFT and that's basically going to be a filtering operation of white noise okay so we start we start from the uh, smooth approximation of the signal the uh, the random faces and then we take the inverse DFT and this will be uh, the method that we will use in our examples. So now let's uh, put it all together into an analysis uh, synthesis uh, system uh, using this uh, stochastic model. And uh, so here we see the block diagram uh, that uh, we will be implementing in which we start from the signal uh, X of N, hopefully an stochastic signal. We compute the FFT, we take the, the absolute value and then we do this stochastic approximation which is again this idea of low pass filtering uh, so uh, uh, approximating the magnitude spectrum with a smooth uh, curve and then we can do the synthesis uh, the synthesis will be done by doing this uh, inverse FFT of this uh, stochastic approximation that uh, might have to be uh, zero path and uh, so to, to interpolate it to be a longer uh, size uh, spectrum and then uh, we generate uh, random numbers for the phase spectrum and we can take the inverse FFT of that and that will return a, a fragment of a sound and then uh, we can just do an overlap at the similar in this exactly same way that we did for the sinusoidal modeling here also we will have to take care about some smoothing window so that the overlap at uh, works correctly but uh, with this, uh, we can reconstruct uh, the original signal. So let's uh, uh, listen to some example. Okay, so this is the, the ocean sound that we played before. And uh, then the first is the, the magnitude spectrum, the absolute value of the, the spectrum, uh, of the whole, so the spectrogram of this whole sound with a particular window an FFT size and a hop size and then the stochastic approximation is basically a, a visualization of these coefficients uh, that are much fewer so in fact here we took a, um, a kind of a compression of 0.1 so every 10 samples of uh, our magnitude spectrum we uh, reduce it to 1 so that's uh, the idea of the approximation and then we can synthesize by combining this magnitude spectrum with uh, random numbers. So let's listen to the synthesized result. If you do an AB comparison with the original ocean, it sounds different, but it clearly sounds like an ocean sound. So for stochastic signals, maybe it's not so relevant to reproduce the exact characteristics of the sound, but basically these uh, kind of general characteristics of the sound. And this is uh, what this approach uh, does. So the field of statistical signal processing is quite an advanced uh, topic, uh, as I mentioned, and uh, most of the reference, in fact, are quite complicated, are quite advanced. If you start by looking at these uh, Wikipedia pages, you can uh, 
get links and, uh, and descriptions to uh, all these uh, more uh, complex view of uh, stochastic processes and statistic, statistical signal processing. So feel free to uh, go there and, and check uh, all these uh, topics. And uh, that's all. So we talked in this lecture about stochastic models. Uh, the goal was to introduce a strategy with which to model some sounds or parts of sounds that cannot be well represented with uh, sinusoids. In the next uh, lecture, we will see how we can combine these stochastic models with the other models we have been discussing, the sinusoidal-based models. So I see you uh, in the next lecture. Bye-bye.